Hi, this is just a quick video regarding the Webasto version 3 board by Simon. Um, it's been worked on by Simon and I think David's doing some work on it at the minute regarding his air heaters and he's, he's been playing about with all sorts of heaters with this board. Um, it's a great board and a great project by uh, Simon and David. They've done very well and I have found a couple of um, small faults with the board, mainly regarding if you're using the Wi-Fi feather um, board. It works pretty well with this um, MO or M0 Express board that uh, David's been using quite a lot. But as soon as we go to the Wi-Fi board, it starts being a bit funky, as I think David mentioned in one of his previous videos. So the problems we've got, I'll start with a simple one. Um, at the minute we've got exhaust is on pin three. That's the exhaust thermistor and the water thermistor is on pin five. Well, if you bell them through just in the code in, in Simon's code, he's just got them the wrong way around on a, um, A1 and A2. So in the code, just flip them over, uh, make it so that the where are we let me have a quick check <clears throat> yeah in simon's code he's got the water temperature as a1 and the exhaust temperature as a2 D just swap them over um in the code so the water temperature will be a2 and the exhaust temperature is now a1 and that will just mean that these pins are correct for when you're wiring up external thermistors i have tried to wire in the original thermistor off the webasto board with the 4.7k resistor and the thermistor here and the capacitors in i've took that out um it wasn't playing nice because that presses onto the aluminium cast casing here and gets the temperature from there and it doesn't seem to to get hot enough quick enough to work well with the code um especially when you're not using the current sensor as the flame sensor which I, I am not yet because I still am awaiting that chip to come in the post. So I just linked these out to to get the board working and left it left the define out um commented out in the code. So that's not working yet. But it uses the exhaust temperature uh, to go into burn mode two, which is running from start up. And it gives you 80 seconds to raise the temperature. I think in David's code, he's got it by 15 degrees. I tried going as low as one degree in 80 seconds. And that was still struggling finding a, um, a difference in 80 seconds. I tried up, upping the time and it's just not, it's not good enough really for the code. So I've taken that back out of my board, <clears throat> wired in the 100K resistor back in here instead of the 4.7K. And now I'm using um, three and five up here for both the thermistors. And, the, and both those thermistors are 100K thermistors. Now getting to the, the bigger fault, which only raises its head when we're trying to use this um, Hazu, is that how you say it? Hazar 32 board is the Wi-Fi board. Basically half of the, or more than half of the analog pins um, are on ADC1 and half are on ADC2. In Adafruit's literature, they mention about uh, the ADC pins and it's a, a little confusing how they've worded it. It doesn't make sense and it makes you think that it's the opposite way around which is possibly what Simon looked at originally and the reason for using the pins that he used. So I found anyway that ADC1 pins work while the Wi-Fi chip is activated and ADC2 pins do not work while the, the Wi-Fi chip is activated. And ADC2 is A0, which is our push pin to get it started. So that doesn't work. A1 which is now our exhaust temperature 
pin. That doesn't work. Um, which others are A5, A6, A8, A10, A11 and A12. They're all ADC 2 pins and will not work with Wi-Fi chip activated. ADC 1 pins we have A2, A3, A4, A7 and A9. So in theory we've only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pins to play with anyway. And obviously, unfortunately, these tracers go to the wrong pins. So we can keep AD, um, A2 because that is an ADC 1 pin. We can keep that as the water. Now we've flipped that in the code. So A2 is water. We're going to make A3 for the exhaust temperature. And A7, which is the fourth one up on the small header. One, two, three, four. This one. A4, we're going to use as our push pin. I've also made a little edit so that we can expose um, RX and TX of the serial one off this board for future development of auxiliary boards, i.e. time clocks, thermostats. We can have screens to display the information of what's happening, you know, the burn modes, um, pump speed, fuel need and the mister readings. So that can all then come out and then we can also send data back um, on serial one. So I've done that for future use. Now what I do, or what you should need to do, is cut this trace that goes to pin 4 just here. Hopefully you're going to see this. Cut this trace that's between the two resistors there, that's connected to the top of the R11 resistor. C cut that one there. Um, and then on the back we need to cut this trace here as well. I use a Stanley knife, I cut across and then I peel a little bit of the trace out and cut that off so I know that I've got a decent gap so there's no way that I've miscut or that's going to bend back and, um, and make contact in the future. Make those three cuts and then we need to put in three links. So here's my populated board that unfortunately I've already soldered to the... Uh, pins so it's very hard to see especially up here but everything's the same as how Simon and David have done the board I have got the 100k resistor back in here I did use the onboard thermistor but that doesn't play nice with the code um, basically the casing which is the aluminium cast doesn't rise in temperature quick enough at the start to go out of starting and into running mode um, I think it's set at 15 seconds over, sorry, 15 degrees over 80 seconds in Simon's code. I tried knocking that down to 1 degree over 80 seconds. I even tried 1 degree over 120 seconds and it still wasn't playing right. Um, it, it, it only worked when I held my thumb on the top to make it warm up a bit quicker and that sort of thing. So I've done away with that. I've swapped that back to 100k and then I've got two 100k the misters that come out of the six pin plug. Um, I've put the old heat shrink, heat sink on the glow plug MOSFET because but that has a tendency to overheat. And I think that's that's the only thing I've done. Obviously, I made them cuts up here on that pin four thing in here off the one that comes off the top of the 4.7 resistor with the snower. 100k resistor and then this one over here like I showed you earlier on the blank board then these are the links you need to make so from pin 4 because we cut pin 4 off on the other side so a link from pin 4 to RX of our, our Wi-Fi board and that's going to give us RX and TX expose them for anything in the future that we want to do auxiliary wise where we want to incorporate another Arduino board to to take the, the temperature sensors and the um, fuel need and the burn mode and sorts like and display on another screen we can if we want to send information back from that board back to this board now we can so that's just for a bit of future use so this is the trace we cut here solder 
another link of cable from this pin to the, I don't know if you can see this, but it's the fourth pin across, which is the A7. And then another one from this pad. Let me just remove that. This pad over to this pin, which is actually A3. So now we are going to get the exhaust thermistor. If I just show you my code, again, okay, Simon's code. So that's the only edits on the board I've done, um, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still haven't got that current sensor in. So just to make it work, I linked these four terminals on the left-hand side. When that comes in, this egg exhaust thermistor isn't used for that startup sequence. It uses the current sensor for the flame sensor. So that will get rid of that anyway. But once I get that in, I'll uncomment the um, define in the code to get that working as well, which should just be straightforward. So here's the pin changes in my code that I've made. So that's what you want now. And this is what Simon had for the, I think that was for the Feather M0 Express board. So to get it to work with the Feather Hazu or Hazur or whatever you call it, 32, the Wi-Fi board, you need to do that. There's also a section that we need to take out further down, which defines the Wi-Fi pins. So in Simon's code, it's that section there on line 248 to 251. Just delete that because it automatically defines the pins for the Wi-Fi chip. And if you see on my code, if I can find it, which I can't, <laughs> somewhere in here, um, there's the loop, for surely, ah, there, here look, in my code it's line 280, that is no longer needed, so I just deleted that whole block there that's highlighted. Um, in control, I've got it working so that I have to use the analog push pin to turn it on and off, but I'm still using the blink and the Wi-Fi so that I can get all the data back. So now I get um, all the temp sensors and the... Um, Burn mode, the fan speed, and the fuel need, all that sort of data, I still get through the Blink app, which is quite handy. But I had a problem when I was using this one, where are we, this, using the Blink app to turn on and off with the switch. Um, it was all working fine, everything absolutely tickety-boo. And then I lost Wi-Fi for a, a few seconds or whatever. The Blink app reconnected to the board, but then I was unable to turn it off. Um, it was just revving away, and I had no way of switching it off apart from pulling the main fuse. And obviously, once I pulled the main fuse, then it didn't do the cool-down period or the clearing and all the rest of it. So I got in a bit of a pickle with that. So at the minute, I'm not trusting the Blink on-off button, although it does work. Um, but if you lose Wi-Fi, funky things happen. We can probably alter something in the code there, and I'm presuming we can do that where we are getting um, where is it? If blink enabled, if it's connected, it tries to reconnect and just keeps on going. But I think we put an if statement in there so that. It only tries so many times or whatever. 
and then drops into manual mode so we can always then switch it off but just for now i mean i've just it works for my user case where we have i get a push pin to turn it on and off and then I, i'm still getting all the data through the blink app i think that works quite fine the other one that i've done is obviously before i had this one set at 4700 and this at 4700 for the onboard thermistor now i've done away with that again i'm back to 100k thermistors that i'm using on both so we've got 100k there 100k there 100k there 100k there you use this code in the middle here to calibrate basically to calibrate your thermistor you, there's online calculators that you can put in um, your set temperature at a certain temperature basically you measure the temperature and then measure the resistance and you give that a couple of readings and then it gives you this reading to put in here the coefficient reading which would then make everything perfect but it works pretty good on the um, standard setting the default setting i don't think there's any change in there and the only other change i made is this one so I've altered 15 second, uh, 15 degrees to 5 degrees. Basically, where I put my thermistors, the temperature wasn't rising as far as 15 degrees within 80 seconds. So it then wasn't going into running mode or mode 2. It was staying in mode 1, which is a startup mode, and then just going straight into mode 3, which is shut off, cool down job. So this 5 seconds, 5 degrees, sorry, over 80 seconds seems to work good for me. I did try, like I say, I did try altering all this to use the onboard thermistor, but I, I had it down to one sec, one degree over 120 seconds, and I was still having to put my thumb on the top of it to make that jump up a degree. So this works for me and my user case, but just be aware of that as well. And I think that's it. That's all the edits I did on the code. I have written, which I will make, I'll put up to my GitHub account, but... I have made a bit of a note regarding the pinouts and such like. Um, and this is the bit, this section here is what I copied off a um, tutorial online that had actually figured out the ADC 1s and ADC 2s. Um, and as you can see, this is where Adafruit put you can only read analog inputs on ADC 1 once Wi Fi has started. Hmm. That to me says that they only work when Wi-Fi is connected. What it's meant to sort of say is this. ADC2 is unavailable once Wi-Fi has started. So it's saying that you can only use ADC1 once Wi-Fi has started, but you can also use it without Wi-Fi started. But a bit confusing there by Adafruit, but we've got there and figured it out. I think everything else is pretty much the same. Obviously, I've altered the uh, pinage for this. So we've got RX and TX pins now. Yeah. So I think that concludes the video. Um, I probably will do another video regarding everything and a bit of a video of it running and maybe incorporating in a time switch, time clock, programmable room thermostat and maybe even then go on to auxiliary boards hope this video helps um if nothing else hope it helps david figure out why his wi-fi chip it, um, his wi-fi module is giving out f funky stuff catch you in the next one cheers